my way to speak to Heather Jackson, an athlete that I've never met, but I gather has a fascinating story. She actually started off um, racing as an age grouper and then ended up on the podium at Kona as a pro. And I'm gonna go and find out a little bit more just how she got there. Hello. Hello. Right, Heather, I'm sure you've kind of talked about it plenty of times before, but I'm fascinated to know, you know, coming from one sport into three sports, so to speak, <laughs> how did you go from ice hockey to podium at Kona? <laughs> Where do we start? Oh, man. Yeah, good question. <laughs> So I played ice hockey all growing up. I'm from New Hampshire originally. So yeah, I played four years at university. I was trying for the 06 uh, winter games and I didn't make 06 games. So there really wasn't much after that. And I went home um, in the summer after graduating and um, my parents actually were doing like a local sprint triathlon. So I went with them. It wasn't, it was actually, um, I think it was like a 12 mile mountain bike across at the base of a ski mountain, swim across this lake. It was probably like a thousand meter swim or something. And then the run was up the main um, like ski line wow. on the ski mountain. That so it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. Like it was just this like adventure for me. So that was actually my first triathlon ever. Um, but yeah, that was, I guess my first just yeah and and that was then was this, did something follow that quite quickly or were you just like you did it and put it aside and didn't think anything of it i had actually already um accepted a teaching position over in thailand um for the year after graduation wow. so that was um i was leaving pretty quickly for that um and so it wasn't like put on a back burner but um flew over i was in chiang mai um and i got over there and obviously my daily routine of ice hockey was like not there. So it was like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? So I started running a bit. Um, I would go to a local gym there and some of the local guys at the gym signed up for Ironman Malaysia, which was, um, this was the summer. So I think it was like June or July, which was the following February down in Malaysia. Um, and so I was like, oh cool, I'll do that. And so I signed up. And I don't think I knew at the time what I was getting into. Um, made my way down to Malaysia. And then just um, my si sister actually flew over with like a borrowed bike from my dad at oh. the time that I could use for, yeah. What did you train on? Yeah, um, I was like training at the gym, just like on the spin bike. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I was gonna say cycling in, in Malaysia or in Thailand, it doesn't really sort of appeal. I don't think it yeah. sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I would do like numerous spin classes at the gym, be like, oh cool, I rode a couple hours. Like it was, yeah. So how was that your first uh, Ironman? It was brutal. I think I was the last one out of the water. I'm not kidding. I actually have always meant to go look up the results if they're out there somewhere. Cause I literally, there was like one bike left. It was, yeah. And then I just like rode and I remember thinking the riding was fine. So coming from hockey, my legs were, yeah. Strong. Strong, yeah. I was probably um, 20, 30 pounds heavier than I am now. It was yeah. all like leg muscle lower body weight um so the bike yeah i, I loved the bike you're I was just, just passing out, people yeah passing and like literally checking out this island just taking it in and then the run i pretty much walked it so i was like oh but i remember being out there thinking like oh wow like i would see the pros go by or like the fast people and like okay i definitely want to like race one of these i was like hooked There was a half distance triathlon. I forget which one it was. It was in the New Hampshire area. It wasn't, I remember, and it was just a local one, but they had slots to get into Ironman Lake Placid. And so I went to it and won my age group, and then I got to race Ironman Lake Placid. I ended up winning my age group, so then I got a slot to Kona. So then, I had gotten another teaching job at this point out in San Jose, California. 
and I had to drive cross country um, with my sister that summer after Placid and um, got out there and like Googled local tri groups and like tri clubs, tri coaches. So I met up with one of the local tri clubs and just started, yeah, training with them. And so that was when I think I got, yeah, the most serious. And that was how long before the World Champs? Um, I think that would have been like two months out. Okay. So I had like a pretty good, yeah, two months training. There was one other girl in my age group who was also going and yeah, it was, I remember it was super fun. I just loved that build up. And then, yeah, we were all, all went to Kona. So, and I ended up winning the age group and she got second. Oh my God, <laughs> ended up winning the age group. I'm just like two months of strong, like that's mad. <laughs> so it was pretty, yeah. And pretty cool did time. you have any like aspiration like that going into it? Did you have any idea of how good you were? No, no, definitely not at all. I had no idea in terms of like a global, even let alone like a local in the little bubble I was in in San Jose. Like it wasn't, it was more just, I mean, I was 22 or 23 and um, I just remember it was like this super fun time because I was teaching. So I, I had to fit in training around that. So I'd get up super early, swim, go teach, like rush out of work at like two or three and go get my training in. and we'd have like these fun group rides or like a track session for instance at like five to seven and then we'd all go to like the local bar after and like eat and drink and it was like yeah I just remember being out a lot and like having fun with this like it was yeah it was just super fun I remember and that was what just kept me yeah so into it. And what was that turning point of going from this, you know, fun, doing triathlon because you loved it, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sure and I hope you still love it, but like that change from being an age grouper to being a pro, where yeah. did that like step happen? Totally. Well, I, I mention all that now because I always like this time of year, like when the seasons start to get serious, like try to just think back to that time because for me, that's what it was about and why I got into it and why I loved it so much. and. So when it, things start to feel like serious now, I'm now like, okay, just pretend you're back to like that. Like you're doing a super hard workout and then going out after, like, <laughs> just without going out. Or, but still. you're not doing, yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not just doing that. Just with compression boots on, but I could be going out. Yeah, <laughs> pretending I'm. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, around that same time is when I had met Wadi. Um, he had. He was working for Triathlete Magazine at the time. So he was just in the San Jose area and he was meeting with a bunch of the different um, companies. He was the VP of ad sales. He was trying to obviously get ad sales for the magazine and he was um, came out on the local Wednesday ride, which was this big thing in the area. It's like this 30 mile just all in every Wednesday nights, yeah. But there's this one point on the group ride where you have to get over this hill, it's short, short and steep, but if you don't make it over with those front guys, yeah. it's a headwind back. And so like there was like a gap opening and it was like Wadi and then me and the front guys. And then, and I was like, you have to stay with them like close. I was like screaming at him. Cause I was like, if we get dropped right now, like it's gonna hurt it's for gonna, like yeah. 20 <laughs> seconds. But like, if you stay with them over it, it's like a, yeah. You almost not cruise, but yeah, you're getting out <laughs> yeah. much quicker. So I started screaming at him. I remember he looked back over his shoulder like, who is this chick? <laughs> we kind of stayed in touch, like nothing happened, but it was like, you could tell there was, yeah, mutual attraction. But it was the next year at Wildflower, which is in May. Um, so that would have been 2009 um, that he was there and saw him again. And he was, yeah, I just remember we were like, on this picnic table. It's like at the campsite that we all get every year at Wildflower. And he's just like, you know, you're super young. Like you can always go back to teaching. Like you should just give this a try. Like, uh, like move to San Diego, I'll help you out. Like you can just focus on your training and get like a co an actual coach and just not worry about all the other stuff, like teaching and grading papers and all this, everything else. So. Um, yeah, that was 2000, May. I went back to school um, after Wildflower Weekend and put in my notice. Obviously you had the 
you know, people must have started to think, you know, you've got the potential, you must have believed it as well. But did you ever dream that you were going to be on the podium at Kona as a pro? Uh, no, no, definitely not. I mean, I raced halves for probably six or seven years and I wasn't even thinking of Kona. We would go every year because Wadi had to work um, and I would watch it and just be in awe and just, I loved it, but I, I didn't even have the, yeah, the, desire um, for a while. I remember being there and being like, no, I do not want to like run against a marathon against Rini <laughs> or like <laughs> the top. I, you know, it was when Chrissy was dominating yeah. just these, you know, I, I didn't even put myself there with them. Um, and then it was watching it in 14 that I was like, okay, like maybe not that I had like done everything in halves I wanted to do, but I had gotten better and better at the halves. I feel like I know this You're distance, I was ready for something else. So yeah, that next year is when I... And how was your first Kona experience? Because everyone sort of talks about, you know, like obviously your second one went very well, but like um, going going to Kona the first time and it's, you, you, brought, you had the advantage, I guess, of having seen it a lot. But, yeah. But how was your first experience as a pro there racing? I thought it was, I loved it. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I, to be fair, I feel like I got super lucky in Kona for a few years in terms of just like, I didn't have any issues. Like I didn't have, I think, and this is what we're going into this year with just like not overthinking it. I think once you've done it a few years, like maybe you start to overthink the tiniest little things. Like maybe if I do this or that when it's like those first few years, I was just, just another race. I just going, I prepared for this distance and I need drink a little bit more, I think, or just tiny little things. But otherwise it was, yeah, just another day. And that first year, um, I remember the highlight for me was on the bike. I forget where I got up to on the bike, maybe 13th or 14th. And then I was like running in, pa passing a few people. I think I was up to like eighth or ninth place. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, cause in my head, I was like, if I could go top 10, like that would be incredible. And um, so I'm like running, running, and then you go down into the energy lab. And in the energy lab, there were like three or four girls together. I remember it was like Michelle Vesterby, Camilla, a um, couple others. And within a matter of like a half a mile, cause like you can struggle down there and I struggled there this year. Like it's so hot. It's so, if you're having a rough day or, and, anything can happen in that race and anything can change in a matter of seconds. Like you could literally drop in an energy lab and turn and see there are four girls right there. Yeah. And, and last year obviously wasn't as the result you were hoping for. What have you learned from that? Because you, you know, you've had the first three years, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it worked. You know, your plan, it all worked as you'd hoped and it, but we didn't last year. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why and, and more to the point, what, have you, what are you going to change from that? What have you learned from that? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, so while I just stated that the year I got fourth was maybe the best prepared, I would have said last year was literally like flawless prep. I nailed every session for 10 weeks. Like it was this like straight line up of like progress and nailing sessions and getting stronger. I think it just, yeah, I think I just overcooked it basically because then we usually go 10 days out. So I think it was, we were flying on the Tuesday before the race. And um, I remember I was just, yeah, so tired, like so just thrashed. And I was like, okay, like time to shut it down. Yeah. Here comes the taper, gonna be good to go. And it just, I never came around. Even usually after about a week or so, I was just super light, like I start to feel spunkier and even race week I was like napping I napped the day before the race and when that happened I was like oh god what we learned from that is just um like if I had done that 10 week block earlier so the goal this year is um getting back to the halves which I love I love that style of racing just gonna race a bunch of those until June and then take a little break, mid-season break, and then do a block of that sort, like July, August. September isn't gonna be like the full on loaded, you know, 30 hour weeks, just like nonstop. It'll be, okay, let 
July, August sink in, and then I might do a half in September. Um, we've heard it before, but you know, better to be undercooked than overcooked, especially a race like that. So um, kind of approach it more, I guess, that also learned, well, one from Kona this year, but then uh, this year after the disappointment of Kona, I raced Arizona, which was five weeks later. And, yeah, <laughs> and that is crazy because that's the day I wanted to have in Kona. And that was five weeks later. So we're basically going to push out those five weeks from Kona this year, like what happened in Arizona this year, and try to just replicate that because that Arizona was all off my Kona fitness. I didn't do much in between the two races. And so I went into Arizona fresh, sharp, all the fitness from Kona build, um, and had the day I had been hoping to have. Well, that was absolutely fascinating, just seeing how Heather went from playing ice hockey to being on the podium in Kona, and all those steps and decisions she made along the way. I certainly really enjoyed listening to that. Hopefully you did too. Give us a thumb up like if you did, and hit the globe to subscribe to get all of our videos here at GTN. And if you like this format and finding out a little bit more about a pro, then Fraser did a great interview with Laura Phillip, and you can find that video just down here.